In this complex absolute value problem, uh, the best way, or one really nice way to solve it, is to use um, a piecewise function. And a piecewise function allows us to do some things that it, um, are, make a problem that is pretty difficult to get your mind around, um, more methodical and easy to get to a solution. Um, the way we do it is by solving one side of the equation for zero by subtracting eight from both sides. And we do that so we can call this a function and then eventually find the zeros of that function. When is that function equal to zero? Now the goal of our function is going to be to write it without absolute value. But the only way to do it without absolute value is to create what's called a piecewise function. And that means that the function is going to take on different values uh, or different algebraic um, representation for different intervals. And the intervals happen um, at the zeros of what's inside these absolute values. And so the zeros, well, the first absolute value is 0 at negative 5. The second absolute value is 0 at 2. And so that gives us the boundaries for our, our regions uh, or our intervals. And so our intervals are going to be negative infinity to negative 5, negative 5 to 2, and 2 to infinity. And so those three regions represent the um, places where the algebraic expression is going to be different for this function. And what you do is you look at each one of the absolute values, and if the value in that region is negative, then that means that you need to take the opposite of the expression. So x plus, in this first region, x plus 5 certainly is going to be negative. You plug in negative 10, negative 12, anything inside that region, you get a negative value of x plus 5, so we take the opposite. And then we also take the opposite of x minus 2 because it's negative in that region. And so it's going to be negative x plus 2. And then the negative 8 is not an absolute value, so it just, it just is placed um, as it appears in the function. So that is a representation of this function for that, that uh, portion or that region. Then we're going to look for the middle region. Well, uh, if you pick 0 out of that region, you can see that that one certainly is going to be positive, so we can just write x plus 5. Um, but the x minus 2 is going to be negative, and so we're going to have minus... Um, and it's going to be the opposite, so negative x plus 2, and then minus 8. And then finally, um, we're going to, uh, for the last region, all both of those absolute values are positive in that region, and so we're going to have x plus 5 minus x minus 2 minus 8. Now we simplify our um, pieces of this piecewise function. Um, this becomes plus, plus, and a negative. You get negative x plus x, and so inside that, this region, the value is always going to be negative 7. If you do uh, this one, that's a plus and a minus, you're going to end up with 2x, and then you're going to have 5 minus 2 minus 8, which is negative 5. And then in the last region, um, you're going to get a negative x plus 2, and so that's going to give you x minus x is 0, and so the value of the function there is going to be negative 1. So what ended up happening is we found out that in if any numbers that are less than negative 5, you get a constant value. It's actually pretty interesting. If you plug in 100, or negative 100, let's say, you're going to get the absolute value of negative 95. You're going to get the absolute value of negative, um, if we said we're a negative 100, so negative 102. And then you're going to get... Um, minus 8. And um, the, um, when, you, when you figure this out, that gives you 95 minus 102, which is negative 7. Negative 7 minus um, 8 is um, negative 15. And so the value, and we forgot to add that negative 8, should have been negative 15 here. I just simplified wrong. Um, and so the value there is always negative 15. Whatever you put in, um, you're going to always get negative 15. Same thing's true down here. Anything you plug in for x down here, whenever you do it, you're going to get negative 5. So then, to find out if there's a solution, we find the 0 of the function. Well, there's no 0 in this region. There's no 0 in this region. But there is a 0 in this region, and that's at x equals 2.5 
However, since when x equals x equals 2.5 is not in the required region, um, we are uh, that the inside this interval. That means that it does not actually have a zero in that interval. So it turns out that the solution to this equation is no solution. There is no value um, for x that makes this equation true. And that's because on all three intervals, there's no value um, that, that is a zero in those intervals. Uh, one way to think about it is um, the graph of this actually is never going to cross the x-axis. Uh, if you do f of x is equal to that. And so there's no zero on that function, so there's no solution.